We're with George Rubicic, who played Commander Praji from A New Hope, the original Star Wars. Welcome to the show. Yeah, we used to call it Star Wars in those days. Nobody called it A New Hope because there, were, there was nothing else. Nobody even knew there was going to be another episode, really. Nobody knew, yeah. I mean, nobody knew... Well, I, I certainly didn't, and I don't think many people knew what was on their plates. I mean, the, if you told me then that I would be sitting here signing autographs 35 years later, no way. How does it feel, though, because we see these long lines that you guys have. Do you get sort of overdoing it? Let me tell you a story. I did a convention in Paris a couple of years ago, and there was a guy with motor neuron disease in, uh, in a wheelchair, just like Stephen Hawking, you know, the head to one side really quite quite far gone he just didn't happen to be a genius he was an ordinary guy and Star Wars was so important to this man you know and he was so pleased to meet me I mean you know I mean the tiny part in this film but he was really pleased and it made his day and that was a very humbling experience and it's 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 the sort of thing you come across often and and parents uh, brainwashing their, their two, three, four, five-year-old kids who are so pleased to meet you. And that's, that's, that means a lot. It is totally awesome. But do you ever get, like, writer's cramp or...? No. Uh, Mid-afternoon, I forget how to spell my name. <laughs> 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 the hand holds out. It's the brain that goes. Back to just George R. after that, is it? <laughs> that sort of thing, yes. Well, tell us about the commander character. What do you know about him? Not a lot. <laughs> it's been a while. You've forgotten it all, have you? <laughs> if I ever knew. Um, He's uh, Princess Leia and, uh, and, and company have, uh, have disappeared off the Death Star with carrying something or other with them, I don't know what. And uh, I just reported to Darth Vader and he doesn't kill me. I mean, it's part of the job description. If you work for Darth Vader, you're going to get killed. But he doesn't kill me. <laughs> Any things you can remember from on set there, working with such a gargantuan guy? Uh, yeah, I mean, I knew Dave. I mean, Dave had been around for years, as indeed I had. <laughs> uh, and I'd worked with him on a couple of occasions before, so I wasn't really frightened, if that's what you mean. Um, it was just another job. You know, I, I had three days on it, of which one was spent in my dressing room waiting for something to happen, and it didn't. Uh, and uh, no, there was nothing special. Uh, there was one, uh, I do remember one thing, there, there's a, a, a part of the sequence, uh, Vader picks somebody up and strangles him. and. I'd, I'd never known how, how they did that. I mean, Dave was strong enough to pick him up anyway, but they had a sort of seesaw effect. Okay. So that the guy would stand, uh, the, the shot would be on his face, and they'd uh, rock the seesaw so he would go up, and it would look as though Dave was picking him up, but he wasn't. It was a fake. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> We've never heard that before. Now, also, this was the first Star Wars filmed. You're working closely with Darth Vader. When you first see that sort of sight, what did you think of the Darth Vader costume? Uh, I, I thought it was. I thought the helmet was absolutely brilliant, and and the cloak and the the sort of the outline, the silhouette, was very menacing indeed. And of course, there was no heavy breathing going on in, in uh, on the floor. But when that was added, it was it was very menacing. Yeah, in a in a. In a non-threatening sort of way, it was menacing, but it wasn't like uh, it wasn't like Psycho, for example. You, know, you, you, you didn't feel you were going to be knocked off by this guy. <laughs> menacing but cool. Brilliant, brilliantly put. True. Mm. All right, George. Well, what do you, just finally, what's your hopes for the future of Star Wars? Uh, judging when I first started doing these conventions, what? Ten odd years ago, it was, the the fans were exclusively male. Right. Uh, you didn't. They didn't bring their wives. They didn't bring their partners. They did, certainly didn't bring their daughters. Sometimes they brought their sons. You know, we're not going to climb a mountain to bond. I'll bond with my son by bringing him to a Star Wars convention. <laughs> but now it's completely different. There are a lot of women uh, who are clearly interested in what's going on. Uh, well, there. Yeah, that, that, uh, and daughters are coming with sons, and yeah, that's good. That's good. It is great to see the family influence of Star Wars and these conventions, well, for family sure. Family influence is a good description, yeah. True. And great to see you, George. Take care. Okay, thank you very much.